I find a fairly lean cut of meat on sale at the chef's store, and then I cut away as much fat as I can before I grind it. So we get this little 25 pounder and take it home. Okay. So making coarse ground ground beef, a very coarse grind. So making our own. We got that meat that we got at chef store and got our grinder attachment on our KitchenAid. And then from experience sometimes this kind of splashes out. So if we put a little parchment shield on here, and that kind of contains it. Then I'm going to put the cookie sheet under it to catch the beef as it comes out of the grinder. And then put the pan on a pedestal so that it doesn't have to drop very far. Then I can move the pan around on there and catch the beef. Answers that age old question, where's the beef? I just use my hand. I mean, for the most part, I'm hoping I can just move the tray around. So anyway, so a very coarse grind. Be great for chili or various other things. Hamburger helper. And it's a very lean cut. We're only putting two to three pounds on each tray. That way it'll cook quickly and brown a little on the tops. Which Got a tray full have? of lean ground beef. Hot pan out of the oven. So we've got a cookie sheet lined with parchment, uh, the, the coarse ground beef on it. So cooked it for uh, 400 degrees in the oven for 15 minutes. It looks pretty, pretty close to just what we want. We'll get them into the little pans, one pound in a pan for pre-freezing, and then get them pre-frozen and ready for freeze drying. Okay, so first pan, 16 ounces. And next one, I'm gonna use the divider so I can get the two halves in there. I need eight ounces on a side. Okay. And then eight ounces on the other side. The French fry scoop would be a great choice for this. Okay, so another pound, half pound on each side. So that can go ready for pre-freeze. We'll get the defrost fan out and the little piece out of there. So it's time to set it up for the next batch. Just after 8 p.m. on the 18th, trying to get the next batch in there tonight. We'll get this cooling. It should only take half hour to an hour. And then we'll get the next thing in there. Going back to the top of the list, doing ground beef. We have a coarse ground, a very lean coarse ground beef that we ground ourselves, uh, cooked it in the oven. Of course, we probably just saw that on video. So never mind about that. Let's finish getting this set up first. So here's the water out of the last batch, which was the meatballs. And it's about three quarters of a gallon, maybe a little bit more. That's the water from the 10 pounds of meatballs. We we'll use the little grabber thing with a paper towel chunk to double check in here. So going along the sides. Okay, nothing. And on each of the rack shelves, Okay, still nice and clean. Okay, there was a little bit of, uh, there was some dampness up there. Oh, here, let me get that back out of there so I can get down there too. Okay. I'm gonna grab a, gonna grab a, a new dry chunk. OK, 
Okay, and underneath, same thing. All right, so I didn't find any food bits or anything, so a little bit of dampness, that's out of there. Uh, clean and ready to go. Now, get the thermometer in there again. Okay, get that in there. Gonna wipe that down, make sure that the door is pretty clean where the seal area is. I can see a little bit of stuff where the seal touches. All right, get that closed. Close the drain valve. Before I start, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the ring. I can see a little gap right here. So I'm gonna put my little palette knife in there and just give it a little twist. It really doesn't take much. And maybe this isn't even an issue with a, a newer machine. Uh, mine's always had a little bit of a um, gaps on there, usually at the top and bottom. Okay, now I've got a good ring all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and start it, get it pre-cooling. So I'm gonna start it, and I could just use start, but I always do it this way. And start custom. And I did cl close the drain valve, so it's ready. All right, come back when it's a little bit colder. It's been cooling for about three quarters of an hour. It's down to 11 degrees. Let's go get things ready to get the food in. Uh, first, gonna get the parchment cut for the trays. So I still have some of the roll of parchment that I cut on a previous one and another one. So I've got plenty of parchment still. I've got two marks on the table here that I just drew on with a felt pen. And if I align the edge of this metal ruler with that, or align the edges with the ruler, then I just tape it in place. And then I just tuck this under it. Pull it out. So that it's even with the edge of the table. And then I just tear them off. And it's not, re it's not required to put parchment paper on your trays. Uh, they're stainless steel trays. They wash up real nice. But sometimes things stick to them and this makes them not stick. You can also get parchment paper, or you can also get silicone mats that go on them. I just go with the, the parchment because um, it's really, really inexpensive and fast to deal with. I got my parchment for my trays. Now let's get the food out of the freezer and get it over here. So got things pre-freezing as usual. So even the trays are pre-freezing and the trays of ground beef. So get those out of there. And I just need a total of 10 of them. All right, so I still have more for another project or for later. Okay, tray number one. Gonna go ahead and get gloves on because this stuff is cold. So all I really need is the tear weight of the tray because I know that before it started, it was two and a half pounds. But I'll go ahead and start with that. So I've got the coarse ground beef. And they just pop out real easily. The half tray parts. And the other full part. And the 1876. Okay, and tray two. Finish up that half piece. Does leave a bit of the ice behind, and that's fine. And 1863 on that one. Tray three. 
All right, 1846 and tray four. Okay. And 1853. And I do know that these were all, should be all two and a half pounds because uh, I weighed them as I put them in there. So for rehydration purposes, I can use two and a half pounds as my beginning weight. Okay, now I want to get the thermometers in there. And obviously they're not going to just push in there. That's too solid. So I'll drill them in. That need to go a little further, about another three quarters of an inch. Okay, let's try that. All right. Then I can monitor the inside temperatures. By working quickly, everything stays nice and cold out of the freezer until it gets into the freeze dryer. These are still dropping. This says 10 degrees. We'll get them in there before they have a chance to warm up any. They're still nice and cold. We'll get them in there. So starting at the top, with tray one. Okay. So they're all still below 10 degrees, so nice and cold. The machine is now down to negative three, so it continued cooling in those few minutes. It only took less than 10 minutes to get them out of the freezer and loaded onto the trays and into here. So nice quick load. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to check for the ring around the door. Uh, make sure it's all the way around. I see a space in here that it's not. I'm going to use my little pallet knife. Okay, the least little twist and it's got a good seal now. Okay, so this will be done. Actually with ground beef, there's not a huge amount of water in. It could be done tomorrow evening, um, but no later than the next evening. So today's the 18th. This will be done probably early on the 20th and then we'll get the next thing in there. Pump is still full. Oil looks clean still. Okay, you got the cooling fan going. So everything's set for when it starts. The homemade ground beef is in the freeze dryer. I've set it for a six hour total freeze. It was 45 minutes before I started loading the trays. And so um, 10 minutes later, the trays are in there. So it's got about five more hours of freeze. Now, if it's if it's frozen before that, I can start it ahead of time. Uh, I have the older software. It doesn't start automatically except by time. I've found that works out very well for me because I know how long it takes to freeze. And with the thermometers inside the food, I know when the food is actually down to temperature, not just the uh, temperature probe or the thermistor under the one tray. So this gives me a very precise measurement of when the food is all the way frozen. Anyway, so a uh, day, two days, it'll be done and we'll come back and unpan that and get ready for the next thing. The ground beef has been going for about 27 and a half hours. All the thermometers are up to temperature uh, with about, from about 115 to about 130. I'm going to take them out and weigh them and put them back in and give another couple hours, except it's 11.30 at night, so it's going to stop itself in a couple hours. I'll just let it set. So after two more hours, it'll be 29 and a half hours, and I'll call that the dry time if it doesn't lose any more weight uh, after the next check. So get past the last of that. Okay, get the drain valve opened. And get those out and weighed. Okay, tray one, 1121. 
I'm going to rotate the trays. Tray 4, 1147. I'm going to put that at the top. That one's much cooler. It shows about 115 degrees. This one's about 130, about 130. And this one's about 115. Okay, so tray two, 1125 grams. Tray three, and that one's tray three. Gonna put it up here. Okay, get those back in. So, got those back in there. I rotated the trays. Now it's one on the bottom and four on the top. Okay, got the drain valve closed. Going with more time. Close the drain valve and it's still cool. All right, so I'm gonna give it two more hours and then check it again. So it's back in there. Uh, I'm not gonna take it out until the morning because it's uh, 11.45. So I'll leave it in there. It'll stop in two hours and just sit there and get cold. I'll rewarm it a bit before I take it out in the morning so that it's got the best chance to have been done. If it doesn't lose any weight, that means it's done now, which is 27 and a half hours. And I'll count 27 and a half as the amount of dry time. If it loses some more weight, that means it's still drying right now. And I'll call it the 29. Anyway, so. I'll figure out how long the total time is by when it stops losing weight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, it's ridiculously early the next morning. Uh, ridiculously early, like quarter after 11. Can you believe how early it is? So I'm going to get them rewarmed so I can get them out of there and uh, checked. It's cold in there right now. So still closed. So yeah, it says it's negative 66 in there right now. It's chilly. So I'll let that warm up for a short time and we'll get those out of there and checked. The ground beef has been rewarming for about 45 minutes now. All the trays are above 80 now. Uh, I'm gonna get them out, weigh them, and see if they were done. So arrow past all that. Get the drain valve opened and get these out of there. All right, so we'll check the temperatures. It's 90, 100, 90, 105. So now check the weights. So tray one. Okay, it has not changed. So it's still 1121. Tray two, tray three, and tray four. So no defrost. And get the defrost fan in place. and get that defrosting. So in the meantime, we'll get these moved over to the bagging area. So here's the power usage for the ground beef. So 22.61 kilowatt hours. It was finished in about 30 hours, but it has almost 40 hours total runtime right now because of leaving it overnight. Um, when it's in that mode, it's still using about 200, I think about 250 watts. That would be overstated by a bit if you were here and ready to take it out. So I'll reset it for the next one. Okay, we'll get the final weights. Uh, we'll get the thermometers out of everything and get the final weights so we can calculate how, how much a pound is now. So tray one. 11.10 after it is complete. Tray 2, 11.13. And 3, 11.28. And tray 4. 
11.35. All right, I'll do the math, find out how much per pound now. Be right back, don't go away. So we've got all the weights on the ground beef. It's ready to bag. Uh, get that bagged in just a minute. Hoping to get one pound in a quart bag. We'll see if it'll fit. Uh, what was 10 pounds is now 1,490 grams. So it's lost about three quarters of the weight. This is very lean ground beef. So one question I often get is, well, how long will it last? Uh, it has fat in it. How long will it last? How long can you store it? I don't know. We've had our machine for less than five years. So I only know from personal experience that our home stuff will last five years. However, commercial places like Mountain House uh, have ground beef with significant levels of fat in it that they guarantee for 30 years. I have no doubt that this will last for years. Again, all I know for sure is five years. So we're gonna get those bagged and then we'll get everything set for the next batch. Quart bags labeled with my usual sloppy writing. Got the batch number, what it is, and the date that it went into the freeze dryer. I always use the date that I put it into the freeze dryer for all of my tracking. It doesn't really matter as long as you can go back and find the item. We'll get these started. I'll put the weights on after I test one to see if one pound will fit in there. One pound would be this whole block. I don't know if it's going to fit in the quart bag. I think it will because the granular nature of it should allow it to fit in there. So we'll get the scale teared out. Okay, so need 149 grams if that's going to work in there. And it's going to just fall apart on here. And of course I've washed the table very well again. Uh, so after I spill it, I can still use it because that's almost a guarantee. Oh, that's not going to be a problem, I think. So if I think if I actually, if I break it up a little bit more, it'll probably scoop easier. I'll have less of a issue. Okay, so we still need, need to get to 149. We'll put that little piece in there. All right, that's close enough. I'm gonna give it a shake. Okay, it's pretty full, but it'll close well. And I've got one pound in there. So I'll add the uh, information on the bag that it's one pound. All of my weight information that I use when I say one pound, I'm talking when it's still wet. And the same with I'm putting serving size on my little chart. I'm using when it's still wet. Because uh, that's what I, I want to know. What did it weigh? So when I, you go to use the ground beef, if I'm using a recipe that calls for a pound, I want to know that it was a pound. And this was a pound after it was cooked. So it's going to be a full pound. One pound and it needs 304 grams of water to bring it back to the pound. I'll get the rest of these bags labeled and come back and bag everything. So I've got all the bags labeled now with the one pound and how much water it needs. And of course, when you go to rehydrate this, you don't have to use water. You could use beef broth or something to add even more flavor. Okay, so back to this. I uh, need about 304 grams. I don't need 304 grams, that's the water. I need 149 grams, jeez. All right. So again, nice and full. So I'm gonna have to shake each one of these down. If it was a finer grind, it would fit easier in there. But I like the coarse ground, uh, ground beef because it's really good in chili and, and in everything. I'm just gonna squish it toward the middle a little bit. And if there's any of the big clumps, I'm, I'm going to break them up a little bit to help fit the bag better. 
And as far as fats go, there's less fat in this than there is in the cheese. There's less fat in this than there is in the ice cream. For the question of won't the fat go bad? Yes, fats will go bad. The lack of oxygen is going to really slow down the, the process. And so maybe this will only be good for storage for 10 years instead of 30 years. I could live with that. You can see, well, maybe you can, uh, how lean the beef was. This has less oils on it, I think, than the cheese did. So very, very lean, should do very well. We have the coarse ground beef in 10 quart bags. Going to put the oxygen absorbers using 300 cc oxygen absorbers in the bags. Okay, get those in there. Gonna try to make sure there's one and kind of tuck them along the side so they don't get caught in the zipper. And these, I don't have to worry about crushing anything because after all, it's ground beef. And if you had a vacuum chamber, it would be really easy to just put that in the vacuum chamber or however that works and suck it out. I'm just going to squish out any extra air I can and seal them down. Okay, get those all heat sealed now. Using our impact sealer, we'll get those sealed as close to the top as I can. And this first one I'm going to do twice to make sure that the machine's up to temperature. And hold for a few seconds. Okay, got a nice wide seal at the top edge and I still have room for more if I need it. You could grab a bag of freeze-dried crushed tomatoes, some uh, freeze-dried beans, uh, chili beans, some freeze-dried jalapenos, and a bag of the ground beef and make yourself some chili. Let's see, some green uh, freeze-dried onions, green freeze-dried bell peppers. Anyway, all the ingredients for chili. And last, I'm going to write the gross weight of each bag on the bag. So if it ever has a failure, I'll know. So 175 grams. And I just write that on the bottom edge of the bag. Now they're ready for the storage in the bins. And between batches. I like to wipe down all my table surfaces because I know I'm going to spill. So make sure it's clean and usable. We're working on filling bin three. It only has a couple of items in it so far. We'll get the ground beef added to it. With the addition of that one, it'll give us 130 pounds of food stored away for future. And then get ready for the next batch, which is going to be vegetables again. Uh, probably frozen corn. So let's get those in the bin. This will be 10 more bags for this one. I'll have it on my location sheet so I'll know where to find it again. So with those stored away, we're ready for the next batch. In general, one of the most common questions I get is, how long did that batch take? I always feel like saying 32 hours. If you load the trays with the right stuff, the right amounts, the same way every time, you could get every batch to take 32 hours if you've really tried. You could also get every batch to do 25 hours if you wanted to. Put a little less on the tray, spread it out more, you're going to get a faster dry time. 
load them up, they're going to take more. Even if you do consecutive batches with the exact same material in, with the exact same amounts in, loaded the same way, as close as you can, you still might have hours of difference between the times. The room temperature makes a difference. The room humidity makes a difference. How cold it was when it was pre-frozen makes a difference. There's lots of variables to go into it. So it's really hard to say how long will that take. And what I'm doing in my machine, mine's an almost five year old machine. The firmware has improved greatly over the years. They're faster drying now. The machines probably have improved too. There, there are so many variables to go into how long does it take to dry. That's why normally on my videos I don't say how long it takes to dry things because it's pretty much useless to anybody but me. On this series I'm trying to put a lot of data in because people have been asking for it. And you can see if it's useful for you or not.